How's it going guys? My name is Thomas Blakemore, I teach travel and sometimes drive and this is going to be a teach video about workload, workload, workload. It's the one video I get asked to make all the time and I always find it difficult to approach. I find it difficult to approach for one key reason, I can't really change the workload that you guys have. What I can do is give you some tips on how to develop a better work-life balance but when it comes down to workload, it comes down to your school. It's a range of different things that your school does. So, for example, what is your class size? That's a big one. Um, how many books are you expected to mark in a day? What does the marking look like? How many pens do you need to use to mark? You know, you'd be surprised how much time changing pens takes up. And, you know, when it comes to planning, how much detail is expected within that planning? Are you expected to reflect after every lesson? And if you're expected to reflect after lessons, do you have to write those reflections down? All these different things affect workload. And it's hard for me as an individual to start to impact different schools and try and take away workload. What I can do is give you tips on work-life balance. Thankfully, there are individuals out there, such as you know, Mr. P, people like that, who do try and really make a big push on reducing workload. So thanks to those people. Because I'm aware that you guys are short on time, what I wanted to do is for developing a better work-life balance, sort of break it down into individual episodes and create an almost workload series if you like. We're going to start with work-life balance. So one of my biggest tips when it comes to developing a work-life balance is actually having a life. That sounds obvious but for me as an NQT I really prioritised work and I didn't have a life. You know my friendships dwindled and I didn't really prioritise going out for myself and as a result what would happen at the end of a school day is I would stay in at school and just wait it out and, and stay in. I would come in super early and then stay in super late because I didn't have a good reason to be outside of school. So having that life that you look forward to living is really really important because that way you'll actually really be surprised by how much work you actually get done when you know that you've got something coming up after school. So for example that you go into the cinema, that you go into, I don't know, for me it was a basketball game or something along those lines, have a life. Tip number two, establish routines. What I mean by that is establish specific days where you leave school early. That is really, really important. And I found that a really good thing for me. It doesn't always work, but having certain set days and after the first few weeks, you find out what days you can probably leave a little bit earlier. It's really good because then you're thinking about leaving work and then this is a hard one again, it, it depends on your school. Try and leave work at school. So I know for me, I would try on a couple of days a week to finish school a little bit earlier. Like I said, I sometimes finish at six, so I'd try and leave at 4.30, but then leave books at school, especially on those days where I have you know, that lighter market. Set a going home time full stop and not just waiting until the caretaker goes, come on, it's time to go. That's a 0.5 tip. Tip number three is learn when to cut off. We live in a world that is really, really connected by these things. And that is fantastic at some points, but it's also a negative because it means that we're constantly getting email notifications through about work. So learn how to turn off notifications and cut off from emails so that when you're actually doing your life, doing your life, is that a, yeah, we'll go with that. When you're actually living, you're not getting emails about work, so you learn when to cut off. Say tip 2.5 would just be to eliminate emails from your phone full stop so that you're just able to just disconnect completely. Tip number three would have been useful for me when I was in NQT. It takes a little bit of time, but it is something that can actually improve your work-life balance. And that's just to write a to-do list so that at the end of the day, when you think you're done, you don't just suddenly remember that thing that you forgot to do before and then you've got to do that basically. Tip number four is to allocate time to specific activities. So things like your marking, things like your planning, to allocate a specific amount of time to get those things done. I know that for me, I get really distracted by things like my phone, like the snacks in the staff room. I just get distracted by other things like conversations. So having a specific amount of time, specific, specific. Having a specific amount of time to get things done can make you a little bit more focused just to, to get it get it done. Tip number five and my final one for this video is to not be afraid to say no. I know that especially as an NQT you can sometimes feel pressured to do a range of different things within the school and then become inundated with a range of different tasks. 
It's a hard one to learn, but don't be afraid to say no, or that you know maybe you'd like to do it, but I can't right now. Don't be afraid to, to say no to specific activities. You'd be surprised at how much all that work starts to accumulate. In addition, you don't have to feel guilty about it. I made a previous video on it's okay to be okay, and it's about self-acceptance and not feeling pressurized by other people and their standards. So you can check that out. I'll put a link down in the description and maybe at the end of this video. So it's okay to say no to certain activities. So I'm gonna end this video here. In the next video, what I'm gonna do is talk about routines that you can do within the classroom and hopefully think about ways that you can reduce your work and develop a better life outside of school by doing little bits and thinking about tweaking little bits inside the classroom. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a massive thumbs up. And if you loved it, subscribe down in the corner, click the notifications bell and you'll be alerted when I post. I'll see you in the next one guys, and for now, I'm out.